Well, you can certainly call me surprised because Transformers 1 was a lot better than I was expecting. My expectations were low to mixed. I was trying to remain cautiously optimistic, which was harder to maintain as time went on and more and more trailers and promos and everything came out. I was holding out hopes I was going to reserve judgment until the movie came out because I didn't want to immediately jump on it and say that it was going to be terrible or say that it was going to be great or anything. I, I was really unsure what to think, but then all of a sudden, maybe three, four weeks, a whole month before the movie came out, all these people started seeing it and getting these early screenings. And I don't know how all these early screenings were coming out. It felt like everyone and their mother had already seen this movie like a month in advance, including my own mom, funnily enough. She and my brother were able to see the film early because I got early tickets and couldn't go, so I gave it to them, and they gave it a glowingly positive review. So apparently they were just handing out these early screen tickets like candy, and they were just tossing them left and right. Everyone could get to see this movie early if you wanted to, and I think I understand why. This movie was betrayed by the marketing, I think, in a serious way, and they are relying on word of mouth to spread and for people to go out there and praise this movie and talk about how great it was and make YouTube videos and really get the word out there just by spreading it around. I'm a pretty big Transformers fan, as you may be able to tell. That's pretty much the only thing I do on this channel, aside from Miraculous. But as a big Transformers fan, after that initial trailer dropped, I was very scared. The movie looked like it was going in a drastically different direction than what we were expecting and definitely what I was expecting. When we initially heard that they were making a animated film and it was going to be the origin story all set on Cybertron, no humans, you know, all that stuff, everyone was really stoked and hyped and we thought we were going to get something like War for Cybertron or Fall of Cybertron or something like that, even maybe the 86 movie going back. Something along those lines, maybe a more serious, you know, you've got some jokes here or there, obviously it's not super dark and dour the entire time but you know not what we got at all and that first trailer did not portray that tone and that was very scary because it went in the complete opposite direction that I was at least wanting it to that really destroyed any hope I had for the movie I was really trying to remain optimistic but everyone I had talked to my friends and co-workers and everything they all were in the same boat of the trailer really did not do this movie any justice and it was definitely turning people away I'm actually working on some nicknames. The the one I'm floating right now is um, Badassatron, which is actually pronounced Badassatron. Well, I'm out, guys. If this is what's cool now. I think I'm done. I no longer have any connection to this world. I'm gonna go home and kill myself. Then suddenly, all these people start seeing the movie early and talk about how great it is. And you see some Instagram posts and some social media stuff here and there and some YouTube videos all start dropping the day it comes out. Then I go to see it a little bit early. I see it on Thursday night and it's really good and I am shocked because I was again thinking this movie was going to be very okay. From the trailers it looks like this movie saw what Marvel was doing and the tailspin that it was currently careening into and thought hmm you know what that's a good idea we should also do our own tailspin and so then they just dove off the cliff with them and I was like well you know what maybe this movie will still be okay you could get some fun scenes maybe here or there there'll be some fan servicey stuff it'll hopefully just be enjoyable I guess you know I'll, I'll give it a whatever I can get maybe get some fun out of making fun of it but then it turns out to be good and everyone loves it and is doing great well the reviews are doing great. Financially, it's doing okay, but you know, we'll get to that later. Essentially, the first thing that I tell anybody that hasn't seen this movie is the trailers are going to lead you astray. Don't even go watch them. I, I told one of my coworkers, don't watch the trailer. You haven't seen it. Don't go watch it. Just go watch the movie because the trailer will make you think the movie is far worse than it actually is. And you know that as a trailer, your job is to do the opposite and to make the movie look good. But no, that, that's not what happened at all. All the trailers and all the promos and the marketing, I live in LA, so you know, there's billboards and bus stop benches and it's plastered on the sides of buses and it's all over the place. You can't go five minutes without seeing something related to Transformers 1. There, there's a ton of marketing for this movie. There's a lot. They are putting a lot of money into the marketing budget, especially within like the couple weeks leading up to the release and now afterwards, they seem to have really ramped it up. But I don't think any of it is really that good and really accurately portrays the movie and what you're getting into. Again, a lot of it portrays it as this goofy, lighthearted, Marvel-esque wannabe copycat that's, you know, being all fun and goofy and it can't take itself seriously at all and it's just gonna be, you know, whatever, maybe some Transformers fans will enjoy it. And I think the main concern for me now is that I don't know if anyone outside the Transformers community is going to see it. Because I really want this movie to do well. They have a plan for an entire trilogy of films, and I really hope that this movie does well enough to get that trilogy, because I think it deserves it. But 
But the problem is, I'm not sure if it's going to make that much money to get the sequel, because I don't think the average moviegoer is really going to go out of their way to see this. I felt the same way with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that came out fairly recently. I'm I, Again, I don't even know the name of it. All I know is it's the one that came out within the last couple of years. It had the Spider-Verse style animation that everyone was praising. And, you know, it looked fine, but I don't really care about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I had no real desire to see it. I wasn't going to go out of my way to watch it. It came out. I heard some people say it was good, but, you know, it's just, it's just not my thing. I don't really care that much about the franchise, so why would I go see that movie? And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen here, is that no one who cares about Transformers is going to come to watch this, and then the movie will do okay, maybe middle maybe it'll make its money back, but if it doesn't do well enough to get a sequel, that'll be very disappointing, and then they'll probably just go back to make, I don't know, Rise of the Beast 2 or whatever they're gonna do with G.I. Joe, who knows at that point. It would be a crying shame if this movie didn't get a sequel, and I think it really earned it, and it did great, and so my hope is that it doesn't fall the box office to the point where they can't do any more with this. Even if it does decently at the box office, I think it could have done so much better if the marketing hadn't really capped this movie in the knees. Everyone who I've talked to that isn't a Transformers fan about this has said that the movie looks incredibly mediocre, cheesy, corny, nothing that they would be interested in. And so you're drawing these people away from the film who might have gone to see it if it looked cool or fun or interesting, but now they're coming away with this impression that the movie is just going to be some generic, boring slop, and they're not going to go to the theater to watch it and see that it's actually surprisingly good. By the way, in case you haven't noticed by now, I don't need to tell you that this movie is good. Everyone else has already done that. I could put a review out, but everyone else has already done that, and I'd rather talk about something that's been on my mind more and I think is more important to talk about. Plus, I'll do a full review once you get the video available digitally and I can actually fully break it down and whatever. I was going to do a video before this about, you know, what is the best Transformers film and I was going to cover all them and I'm kind of glad that I delayed that as far as I did because I think Transformers 1 would take the cake easily on that. It would jump to first place fairly easily. I've been really thinking about whether or not it should overtake something like Bumblebee or maybe the 86 movie. The 86 movie is really fun and it's got some charm to it and is really cool, but let's be honest guys, in terms of writing and story-wise and thematics, like Transformers 1 is going to be pretty hard to beat. Again, I need to rewatch Bumblebee because I think Bumblebee's pretty solid and I have a soft spot for the first Bay film, but that's not going to take first place, I don't think so. Transformers 1 is, I think, the best Transformers film, at least at the time of uploading this video. And that's not just recency bias. I really do think this is a great film, and I've told everyone that. I, I When everyone asks me what I thought of the film, I say, I don't want to speak too quickly, but I think it is the best Transformers film. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with a reason why it wouldn't be. I think it would be a crying shame if the best Transformers film kind of gets shafted to the box office and doesn't really go anywhere in the future, and I'm really hoping they get that chance, but even if it doesn't, and it just ends up that Transformers 1 is the only Transformers 1 film that we ever get, we don't get a Transformers 2 or whatever, I think that would be okay. It wouldn't be the worst thing ever. It'd be very disappointing, but you could just have it be a one and done. I really hope it's not. I, I think that's one of the strengths of the movie is that I, even if it doesn't get a sequel, it doesn't rely on that. It's not dependent on a sequel to finish the story like you know certain other films are. It's very much its own story. It does something unique and fun. It's got a lot of good elements to it. It's got great writing and characters and thematic work, and it's just a blast. It's really fun. I had a great time. It's amazing to see. Happy to watch it multiple times, and I'll be definitely buying it on whatever media comes out in the future, DVDs, all that. But again, especially going back to that first trailer, if you watch it and you're expecting something like War for Cybertron or Fall of Cybertron, something along those lines, a more serious war movie, and then to be hit with that opening of Optimus and Megatron or Orion Pax and D16. So, how long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. You know what? We are so screwed! Thought you weren't talking to me. You've just got all these cheesy jokes here and there. Bumblebee looks like he's going to be the most annoying character in all of Transformers. Just incredibly infuriating. None of these jokes are landing. It all seems incredibly cringy and just boring. This trailer gives you the impression that this movie is going to be one of the most movies of all time. It's just going to be another bland, generic whatever released into the 2020 era of kid, family-friendly movies. This trailer and all the other trailers and everything just makes this feel like it's just another movie. I'm not too sure why this stands out aside from the brand name. Like, if this wasn't Transformers, would I have even seen it? Probably not because nothing really indicated this was a movie worth seeing if you didn't care about Transformers already. 
It also wasn't necessarily helped by the art style. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I love it a lot more after the movie. I think that I was very pessimistic about the art style as well and the designs, but then once you see it in the movie and you get all the proper setups and pacings and you kind of get used to it and it goes on, I think that it works a lot better in the film. I still probably wouldn't call it my favorite Transformer designs, but the movie does look beautiful. The textures and the lighting and all that are fantastic and on point, and I do like it. The faces are a little uncanny, but you know, it's not bad by any means. Again, and when the, this is your first introduction to this movie, when they say, boom, here's a new Transformers animated movie, and they show you these weird little uncanny faces, nothing, again, is selling me on this movie. Nothing really looks like I should go out of my way to see this, especially if I'm not a Transformers fan. If I'm just some random average moviegoer, why would I go see this generic-looking Transformers movie that really doesn't seem to offer much? And honestly, watching the movie myself, that's one of the main fears that I have is going to be a takeaway from this, where I love the movie, and I think it's great, and I can see all this and that, and it's really great for fans, but then I'm worried that the average person's gonna go in, they're gonna watch the movie, they'll come out the other end and be like, yeah, it was okay, it was whatever, it was fine. Kind of, it'll just go in one ear out the other, and they'll forget that this ever happened. I think that would also be a massive shame if this movie was just overlooked as a so-so whatever kind of movie, because, again, I think it's doing something pretty special. I think it's got a lot going for it, I think there was a lot of care and effort put into it, it's very heartfelt, it looks great. There's clearly a lot of effort went into pretty much every aspect of this movie. And so I would hate for people to just walk away and not even really remember what happened. I think it's so much more than just another forgettable Despicable Me 4 or whatever one we're on right now, Rise of Minions, Rise of Gru, anything like that, where it's just another one of these throwaway animated movies that, you know, the kids go see and it makes some money, whatever, and you just move on with your life. I think that this deserves more than that, and so I hope that's not the legacy of this film. We could even get into the whole marketing aspect of this being an origin story. It's not really an origin story to anything. It's not an origin story to Bayverse or G1 or whatever. You can try and connect it in and the director, the producer, whoever can come out and say that it's in this timeline or that timeline, but it's not. It can't really fit into any timeline I can think of without going too in-depth. It can't fit into G1 for various reasons. None of the setups work. It's all different. Alpha Trion's alive in G1 and this and that. Can't be the Bayverse movies because well, Sentinel Prime's not dead in the Bayverse movies and other various origin aspects and the Quintessons. You can't really tie tie this into any major series I'm trying to think of. The only thing I could possibly think of is that it could be a prequel to the Bumblebee Rise of the Beasts timeline, but you would have to do some stretching. Maybe if you said millions of years later you get to Bumblebee because Cybertron clearly isn't in the state that we see it in Bumblebee and so there would need to be some kind of massive reconstruction effort that could take millions of years because again, in most continuities, the Transformers are millions of years old, so you do have a decent time gap to work with where after after the events of Transformers 1, you could time skip a forward a couple million years, and then you could end up in a lot of different timelines, theoretically. So, I'm not sure if they're going to try to tie it into any specific timeline, and I would need to really think about which ones it could even work with, because most of them don't line up. And even if they do, I, I think you might be kind of stretching it. So, calling this an origin story doesn't really seem fair or accurate. And I see a bunch of people on Instagram. I'm pretty much only on Instagram. I don't really have any other kind of social media aside from YouTube. But on Instagram a lot especially, I see all these people making these edits of you'll have Orion packs in D16 and they'll be ball buddies, you know, fist bump and whatever. And then you cut to Optimus and Megatron at the end of the Transformers, the 2007 one. We were like brothers. You watch my back, I promise to watch yours. You left me no choice, brother. And they got this really dramatic, sad music over it. Or in the last night when Megatron goes, we were brothers once. And then Optimus goes, once. And kicks him out of the piece of Cybertron or whatever that whatever was happening in that scene. So you get a lot of edits like that where people are thinking like, oh, this is the origin to the Bay films, and no, it's not. It, it physically can't be, but I think this is marketed towards those people who don't really know Transformers, who kind of passingly know about Transformers, where you go to some random person on the street and you go, hey, do you know Transformers? They're like, yeah, you know, I know Optimus and Megatron. I think I saw a couple of those movies or whatever. I remember the, the 80s cartoons a thing, I guess. I don't know. And so then you get to them and you say, oh, well, this is their origin story. You get to see Optimus become Optimus and Megatron be Megatron, and you know, you, you get all the background and then everyone's like oh cool that's that's really cool because i remember like the michael bay movies i guess and th that's that's cool that there's an origin story to that and it's just people who don't know or maybe the marketing people don't know the, I, there's a lot of things surrounding transformers marketing where it's clearly designed for people who don't know what's going on like everyone calling rise of the 
the Beast Transformers 7. There was all these news outlets saying, oh, Transformers 7 or this or that, especially before it got announced and it was delayed. They were saying, oh, Transformers 7 is delayed. It's not. It's not Transformers 7. Bumblebee's not Transformers 6. They're in a separate timeline. That doesn't make any sense to call them that. It's just designed for people who really don't follow what's going on or the people writing these articles don't really know what's going on and they just say that or they're just thinking that their audiences don't know that and they do or they're like, I know it's not Transformers 7, but do my readers really know that this isn't Transformers 7? The same thing happens with Transformers 1 where you go, oh, well, like, it's not really an origin story or anything, but like, we gotta sell it as something, and we can say, oh, it's the origin of Transformers. Which Transformers? Which of the dozen different continuities? Who knows? It's the origin of something, I guess. We've also got origin stories in the past, but, you know, I get it. It's never been in a feature film, so I understand. I do prefer this film to be in its own timeline, honestly. I don't feel that it needs to connect to anything. I don't want it to be the prequel to the Bay films or some kind of prequel to G1, even though it can't be, because, again, it, it just doesn't line up. So I would much rather it just be its own thing and do its own story and tell their own narrative and generate their own universe rather than try to piggyback off something else and if they do a trilogy I'd be curious to see where they take it they might try to tie it in again if I had to place any bets I would bet that they would try to tie it into the Bumblebee Rise of the Beast series because that seems to be the timeline they're running with for their future projects especially now they're gonna be tying in G.I. Joe to it I would expect that to be the case but you never 100% know they could try and tie it into anything or just do their own universe so I think this movie's strong enough to stand on its own it doesn't need to pick piggyback off anything else. It doesn't need to ride off the nostalgia of a different series or anything like that. And so I just prefer if they did their own thing and that they told their own story. Another thing about the marketing I've been thinking about is that they don't really tell you anything about the story. Nothing really to do with Sentinel Prime or the Matrix of Leadership going missing or anything like this or that. It's very sanitized of any kind of narrative elements and that probably is on purpose because of the fairly major twist about halfway through the movie. Spoiler alerts now, I guess. I wasn't really planning to make this spoiler free or spoiler heavy. I was just kind of talking about whatever needed to be talked about, but spoilers are going to be relevant here, so if you don't want any, go, go away. The big twist in essentially the middle of the first third of the film where Sentinel Prime turns out to be evil, you know, like he was in Dark of the Moon and kind of like a dick and animated. So, you know, when Sentinel Prime turns evil halfway through, you can't really show that in the trailer. You can't show anything post Sentinel Prime reveal really plot wise because the plot essentially turns from we got to get the Matrix to we have to stop Sentinel Prime. And so you can't really touch on that at all. And I don't know, I feel like they were trying to avoid any aspects of the plot other than the Optimus and Megatron are going to turn out to be enemies, which, you know, everyone could again see coming. The whole tagline of the film was bros become foes. That was posted on every single billboard everywhere around town. But I think they were just trying to lean into the origin story aspect of it, of here's Optimus and Megatron becoming what they are in the future. And they were really banking on that to sell the film, and they weren't really going to touch on the Matrix and Sentinel Prime and all this and that. I can understand and I respect it, but then when you're watching these trailers and you have all these ads and billboards, like, what, why are we watching this film? Why are we going to see this? What is the story aside from you get to see Transformers become Transformers? This is only something I thought about after. It's never a thought that occurred to me before the films, but now after having watched it and reflecting on all the marketing and all this and that, what what did I think the plot was going into this? I'm not exactly sure what my expectations were. I knew that they were going to get their transformation cogs and that you know Optimus and Megatron were going to become enemies, but I wasn't really sure exactly what the plot was going to be. And the plot turns out to not be anything I expected. I didn't think it was going to be a plot about Sentinel Prime essentially masquerading as the hero of Cybertron when he actually sold it out to the Quintesson and there was all like a 1984 everything's built on a lie kind of situation so again I was pleasantly surprised by that and I thought it was a cool element but you can't really include that in the trailers unfortunately so I, I understand in that aspect why you can't touch on that and so at the end of the day, you're left with a lot of marketing for this film, but a lot of marketing that doesn't give you a fair representation of what the movie is. You're not going to think that this is a genuinely heartfelt story with a lot of good elements going on and character and some solid thematic work and beautiful visuals and all this and that from the trailer. You're not going to get any of that from any of the marketing. And so what you're left with is a very okay looking movie, a very movie movie that's probably going to be fine you know it could kill a few hours you can get some popcorn whatever take your kids do it and they'll shut up for a few hours but I think that this movie deserves more than that and it deserved better marketing and it should have gotten that and I really hope that this doesn't tank it because now I'm worried that the film's not going to do well enough to get a sequel even though it 100% deserves it. To be clear in my thoughts of all this, all these aspects that I don't like from the trailer are in the movie, but when you have them in the proper context and you have better pacing and timing and setups and payoffs, all of this works infinitely better than it is portrayed. They build up to these jokes and these dialogue exchanges and it works so much better in the context. Even the whole badassatron line, which I think is 
pretty cringe from the trailers. I'm still not a huge fan of that in the movie itself, but I think it works a lot better, and I hated it a lot less than I thought I would. It even kind of comes around on me towards the end. I, I, I ended up liking it by the end of the film, kind of because it intentionally gets overused, I think, which, uh, to me, it works. Again, comedy is subjective. It's not going to work for everyone, but I actually, I came around to liking this joke more than I thought I would. Or the whole shot where everyone's standing there looking at the screen and Bumblebee turns to run away. That's definitely played for a laugh in the trailers, and again, it just seems more of that generic kids movie kind of cringe, like, oh, now I'm gonna run away now, that's scary. It actually works in the movie, though. In, in the film, in the proper context, I think it works, and it's not even super comedic. It is comedic, but it's a, a realistic reaction to what's happening, and I think that it actually says it works surprisingly better than you would think, and it's weird. The, the trailer almost managed to take all of these jokes and bits of dialogue and this and that, and portray it in, like, the worst possible light when you put them all back to back like that and the cuts and the tone that you're portraying it just it makes it look so much worse than it actually is which is bizarre because usually it's the other way around where the trailer makes it look awesome and then the movie sucks but this is the other way around where the trailer sucks and the movie makes it look awesome. So I don't I, I don't know what happened. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I, again, I think this is just meant to appeal to the masses where they went with the approach of to please everyone, you please no one kind of mentality where it was so broad and generic and they wanted to be safe and they wanted all the comedic elements in there because they wanted you to think it was like, oh, happy, fun movie, you know, go take the kids to see it. And they leave out so much else and uh, granted some of it you can't leave in and there's a lot of plot elements you can't include, but there's ways to make this movie look good and I think 90% of this marketing failed at making the movie look good. The trailers and the marketing and everything do a fantastic job at making the movie look worse and sound worse and feel worse and appear worse in almost every aspect. I think that everything just looks worse in the trailers, and I'm not sure how they accomplish that. And given that fact that trailers often make movies look better, that made me extra worried that the movie was going to be worse than what the trailers were showing us. So, I was, again, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that turned around. That was the last thing I was expecting. Maybe this is just one of those movies where you really just have to see it to believe it. You have to see all these things in the proper context and get the setups and the payoffs, and it, 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 it just works. The moral of the story, it just works. Todd Howard would be very proud because it all just works somehow. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. I think that this film was essentially betrayed by all the trailers and promos, and it's going to rely on word of mouth. It's going to come down to a game of, you need to go out there and see this movie, and tell other people to see this movie, and talk about how good it is, because that's the best way that you're going to be convinced. That's how I was convinced. I thought this movie was going to be a bland, generic, whatever, nothing burger, throw it away, until I saw some people say that it was really good, and they had watched it. And then I saw more people say that they watched it and thought it was really good. And then my mom and my brother saw it, and they thought it was really good. My brother's also a pretty big transform fans. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I trust his opinion on all this stuff, so all these people are telling me it's a pretty solid film, and then I go and see it, and lo and behold, it's a pretty solid film. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it, because it's a pretty solid film. Go watch it multiple times, in fact. I don't know, we gotta we got inflate these box office numbers. Get whatever, like, the equivalent of YouTube uh, of YouTube view bots are and get them to flood the theaters. I don't even, don't even know if you can do that, but... Like, we all know Disney's flooding the theaters with bots and whatnot, so I think we can do that, too. It's only it's only fair, you know? I want to have a little bit of restraint, because, you know, it's not perfect. I, I There are some issues I have with it here and there. It's got some things I think could be improved upon, but, you know, they'll save that for another video. That's not really the point here, and I could go on for a long time if we start dissecting the entire film. Film. So I really think this deserves a sequel. I hope it gets a sequel. I hope that the marketing and the trailers doesn't turn everybody away and that I'm I'm really banking on word of mouth here. I think they're banking on word of mouth. And what can I say? It's a great movie. It deserves more reviews. It deserves more praise. And I really want people to go out there and watch this film. So if you haven't already, get out there and go watch it. Well, that's all I've got for today. I'm just kind of rambling on a bit with this off script thing. I've only ever done one of these before. I've got another big scripted video I'm working on that's currently sitting at like an hour and a half or something. It's that's going to take a while. And then I've got more miraculous watch party. So there's a lot of things in the chamber right now. And I'm hoping that this doesn't sit in the editing bay for too long because, you know, this is fairly topical. So my goal is to get this out within a week. But we have to cut some corners and do what all the other YouTubers do and just have some looping trailer footage or gameplay in the background or whatever. There's a reason some people are able to upload like one video a day. 
Uh, I'm, there's a reason I'm not uploading one video a day. I will upload like once every four or five months, six months, however long it's been. But hey, I really had fun with this movie. Let me know any of your thoughts down below and what you think of the marketing. Because again, I might be crazy, but everybody I've ever talked to has said that they hated the trailers and the trailers tanked their opinion of it and they didn't want to see it. So let me know what you guys thought of all the trailers and this and that. And if it surpassed your expectations or didn't meet your expectations, just let me know your general thoughts. I'll be doing a full video on this movie at some point when it actually releases digitally so I can get a copy of the film. Well, that'll be coming out at some point in the distant, distant, distant future whenever I <laughs> get around to it, whenever it comes out. But hey, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I'm hoping you will guys all did too. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for some more videos coming down the pipeline at some point in the future, hopefully, cross my fingers. But thank you all. Have a good day.